So uh, welcome everybody um, to my talk, uh, Stealing a Mobile Identity Using Wormholes. I'm uh, Marcus Vervier. Short info about myself. Um, I'm uh, working as a security researcher and penetration tester in Germany for a company. And I have a long background in security. And my main interests are firmware network security, mobile networks. So, yeah, basically finding bugs and security design. So what it's all about, what, what will we see or learn today? Um, a little overview, many might know that already, um, about how mobile network authentication works. Then, um, yeah, overview of a Android basement of a certain vendor and how to modify it and how I modified it. And, um, yeah, accessing the SIM card on uh, these Android phones from an unprivileged application. And um, oh, the thing is that the slides are not working. <laughs> Actually, sorry. <laughs> Seems to be some technical. The picture is stuck. Ah. Can you start the slides again? Uh, I can. Ah, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, let's start the slides again. Um, so, Okay, so, <laughs> uh, short recap, now with, with pictures. <laughs> so, short info about myself, I'm a security researcher uh, from Germany, working as a penetration tester for a security company, and yeah, I like to do all kinds of security stuff. So, what we will learn is um, how mobile network authentication works, just a short, short overview, so we know what uh, we talk about today. Then uh, the Android baseband and um, how to yeah, access the SIM card on um, Android phones of a certain vendor. Um, and how to use communication channels that the mobile phones have to like, forward the authentication of the SIM card. So, um, a bird's eye view of the mobile network security, basically when um, you uh, have a contract with a mobile network provider, they will give you a SIM card. Uh, which uh, you can use for authentication. The SIM card um, has a secret key that um, also the provider has, and by a challenge response, um, the network um, will authenticate you. Um, interesting thing is the user have no access to the SIM card or to the, to the secrets in the SIM card because it's a temporary resistant device. So the secret key is called KI, and yeah, usually you don't know it. Um, so, um, the baseband is the, yeah, the part of your phone that will uh, take care of the communication with the mobile network. It's a, yeah, it's a separate system in your phone that has a separate CPU and it has uh, usually direct access to the SIM card. And it's also uh, proprietary if it comes from a commercial vendor. There's only one baseband that I know that is open source, it's from the Osmocom guys. But um, yeah, the rest is closed source and you, you can't access it. So um, who uh, yeah, are the vendors for basebands? Um, there are only a few vendors. Um, the biggest one, this is a graphic from the first quarter of 2014 of the market shares, and the biggest vendor is Qualcomm, and then there's followed by MediaTek, spread from Marvel, Intel, and the others. So um, the green ones are the rest, yeah, and then you have uh, MediaTek and spread from. Um, yeah, what we will focus today is on the MediaTek platforms. It's a Chinese vendor, and um, yeah, mostly because it's very convenient, as we went, we'll see, to, to um, yeah, modify and hack it. Because the other basement vendors are taking more care to like lock, 
lock their system down. Um, for the other stuff, uh, there has been some previous work of uh, Ralph Philipp Weimann and others. So, the MTK baseband is based on a real-time uh, Nucleus OS. And a very interesting feature is that it's um, loaded actually by the Android system. Even it is a separate uh, yeah, system, a separate operating system running, uh, it's loaded by the Android system from a file, uh, cast pack, modem, modem.image. And um, yeah, uh, a kernel module takes care of that. Um, Actually, the separation is just logical. It's a system with a chip design with two different ARM processors, but it's more like virtual because, for example, the RAM is shared, which will come in handy later, as we will see. So um, how does that uh, look? What's the baseband? So I down downloaded the baseband and um, from an Alcatel OneTouch 918D. That's an older phone. Um, and the baseband has some very uh, yeah, interesting data in it. Yeah. Typo. So um, if you just run strings on the baseband, you see all kinds of interesting information. So you see it has some information about the version at the beginning. So uh, you can see that it's uh, the platform. You see some other information about the, yeah, that's more the development stuff. Um, you see some source code files, yeah. Um, it has lots of debugging information. It's not, these are not debug symbols per se, but these are, yeah, from the vendor, they have their own debugging uh, stuff in there. So they have a search that will print a string uh, if something goes wrong and uh, tell you also the source code files. Very interesting because now you see what is going on. Um, yeah, this is basically, it's, uh, this is just running strings on that, but this is uh, yeah, like an info, ROM infrastructure. Yeah. So all over the basement, uh, you have a lots, of, lots of different informations, uh, so it's not encrypted. So, okay, we will see more about that later, um, how that comes handy. First, um, so you have the baseband and you have um, yeah, the, the application's processor and the Android system. So how does the baseband communicate with the uh, rest of the phone? Uh, there are two main methods for that. Uh, there's, um, there's the URAT methods, more like a serial connection. It's used for AT commands, um, so there's an AT command processor on the on the basement, and uh, for things like data connections, GPRS. Um, the more interesting part is the shared memory. It's of course shared memory. It's very fast, so you can use it to transfer audio data. You can use it for low-level debugging, and uh, MediaTek also uses that for to control the firmware. So you. Um, can uh, the, the Android system can reset uh, the firmware of, of the baseband? It can um, yeah handle exceptions from the baseband and stuff like that. Okay, so um, as I said before, the baseband is like responsible for the mobile network and for the authentication. So the baseband also manages the SIM card. So. Um, the, sim, the baseband sends uh, command APDUs uh, to the SIM cards. These APDUs are application protocol data units, and they are um, basically the commands sent to the SIM card. And um, on the other side, it will pass uh, yeah, stuff like SMS, your phone book, the SIM toolkit stuff uh, to the AP, which is the application processor where, where the Android is uh, running. So. Normally, there's no need to, for direct access to the SIM card from, by the AP, but um, there's an AT command prompt you can find on the dev PTS, and then there's some number uh, on the MTK devices. And on the other ones, the, uh, they here yeah, sort of messed up the permissions 
um, which gives any uh, any application and any process uh, access to these uh, devices. Yeah, so. Any device can yeah, send AT commands. Uh, any process can send AT commands to this device. Um, another very interesting feature is there's an AT command that um, yeah, allows generic SIM access. This is even specified. It's AT plus C SIM. And um, you can use that to yeah, uh, send commands to the SIM card and read the responses. Um, there are also other methods on other Android platforms, um, which are used by the MC MC catcher guys, for example. Um, but yeah, today we talk about the MediaTek, which is very simple. So, what is the um, command syntax? It's basically you send the AT plus CSIM, then you send the length, and then you send the hex encoded command. The response has the syntax, also length and response hex encoded. <clears throat> yeah, actually, <laughs> there's uh, even an advice in the specifications of the 3G PP to take care with these commands because care must be exercised in AT commands that allow uh, the TE to take unintentional control over the SIM MT interface, e.g. plus CSIM. <coughs> um, it seems like that um, the uh, developers didn't listen to that advice. I'm sorry. So, <coughs> we'll um, have a short overview how that works. So, yeah, this is my uh, uh, poor man's terminal. <laughs> so, and I'm sending commands to the SIM card. Actually, this is a very interesting command, which um, uh, is called internal authenticate. I will dissect that later to explain you what that means. And um, another interesting thing, this means the command is not allowed currently here. But what we need to do is we send another command, which um, uh, is a 0084. And this is a select the file from the GSM, EFGSM. This worked. As you can see, there's a response, comes back. So we try the authentication again and again. The very interesting is the phone is constantly also talking to the SIM card. So it's like currently blocking our communications somehow. But there's, there's some sort of rate condition in the baseband command processor because after some time now, we got a response. And actually this response is the, yeah, the network authentication that you need. So, okay, first the command I sent. Um, this is basically uh, an APDU command. Class is this one, uh, means, um, it's a generic uh, SIM command, basically a class of commands that you are currently working with. Then you have the, the INS, this is the command. Um, this is a command for internal authenticate. This means, um, yeah, run with the key stored on the SIM card, you do, uh, yeah, uh, do some uh, authentication change response. Um, just two parameters, next two bytes um, are the algorithm and the key reference. And then you have um, the payload length and the payload. Um, this uh, payload is the RAND that comes from the mobile network. And uh, yeah, it's basically your, your challenge. So uh, funny thing is, normally this is just 10 long, bytes long, but um, somehow the MediaTek wants 11. Yeah. <laughs> so what comes back? Um, the response um, comes back, this is the SRES and the KC. So if you know a bit more about uh, GSM, UMTS, and mobile network security, you will recognize these are like the, the crypto keys um, that you need uh, yeah, for the mobile network authentication. And this is something that an unprivileged app can like, uh, get from your phone without any permissions. So this is locally, but 
as I said, why not use that uh, SIM access remotely? So, um, what learned, did we learn up until now? We learned that the basement firmware communicates with the application processor over different channels. We learned that we can access the SIM cards on um, many Android phones uh, via IT commands, uh, MediaTek and Ch Chinese phones. I don't have the numbers, but there will be many phones out there that are vulnerable. Yeah. More like in the 100,000s or millions. And that the basement firmware is loaded from a file and located on the Android file system. So what can we do with that? Yeah, let's use that, uh, the SIM card remote from another phone. So we can yeah, transfer the, the SIM commands and the SIM access to another phone or to another platform. Um, yeah, I thought of, um, yeah, the lines are missing, but um, on the left side, you see the, see the SIM card and it's a proxy uh, application is using that over the internet which will like, talk to um, different phones and uh, yeah, um, enable different phones to use that SIM card. This is like the basic concept. So for the title of the talk, why did I call it wormholes? Yeah, basically, I think it's a good analogy because a wormhole is, uh, you know it from Star Trek or from uh, other uh, science fiction movies is basically a yeah, a, a shortcut through space and time, it, which will, uh, which connects like uh, distant places instantly. So you walk like a path, like like a passageway. You walk through it, and then you can travel long distance. Um, and it's not like very sensible that these uh, places are connected. So, what are the wormholes in your phone? Our goal is to transfer the APD use to a remote mobile, but how? So the wormholes on your phone are the other communication channels besides the mobile network. And um, you have a lot in the smartphone, you have a lot of blue uh, channels like Bluetooth, you have two SIM cards which can have two separate data connections. Yeah, You have, have Wi-Fi often. Uh, even there's even a, a legitimate and a specified way that uh, to, to transfer APD use to other phones. It's called a Bluetooth SIM application protocol, but it only works yeah for Bluetooth for short distances. It's not intended to to be used like over the internet. So what we want to do is we want to send the APD use from uh, the remote SIM card to so the use of SIM card remote and um, to travel it over the internet using TCP IP, for example. So, um, what I did is I developed a little yeah, patch application for the baseband and also for, for Android. It's called uh, ShadowSim. I, today I released it on uh, GitHub and you can download it now uh, for the Alcatel 918D. Um, which, um, yeah, not, does not contain the, the full uh, basement file, but it contains like a binary patch because I don't want to run into any legal troubles by uh, like uh, distributing any intellectual property from MediaTek, so I just released the difference. So it implements a virtual SIM card by uh, yeah, patching the basement firmware. Uh, the platform is a MediaTek 6573 platform. It's very uh, widespread used. And um, what I did is I uh, identified a function that capsule, capsules the SIM card access. It's um, the SIM command all. And I changed it to send the uh, APD use to the application processor to the Android and uh, read the response APD, APD use also from the phone. So the other part is a native Android application and it will process the, the APD commands that the baseband is sending. It will forward them over TCP to a remote system or to another phone, and it will um, write the response APDU back to the basement. So basically simulating this, the SIM card on the basement. So it's a short overview. Yeah, you can't see the lines, but on the left you have the uh, SIM server, which uh, has a real SIM card somewhere. And um, over TCP, 
it is yeah, forwarding the the responses that the baseband sends to it uh, to the Android process, and the Android process is talking via shared memory to the baseband. So, um, but to, to go more into detail, how do we communicate from the Android to the to the baseband? Um, the first idea I had was to um, use one of the URADs for the serial connections to like stream the, the APDUs um, to, to the baseband and yeah, that turned out to be a more bad idea because um, the communication in the baseband firmware is, is um, implemented asynchronously. So you have all lots of handler stuff and um, yeah, it would be a pain to, uh, yeah, uh, you register your own handler and then you have to mess with the real-time operating system. So it was not very easy. So I found a better way. I used the shared memory. So I did my poor man's IPC to um, uh, yeah, write the, the APDU commands to, to, the, to the shared memory and indicate that uh, with a bit to, to my application, which will monitor the shared memory. And um, yeah, it will write back. Um, very helpful was that the source code of the of uh, some of the MediaTek phones was published, so we could just see how they do that with the shared memory and how to how to allocate that. Um, there were some other things that helped with the firmware modification because um, yeah, we had to to like uh, disassemble the firmware and assemble the new uh, new function. Um, and uh, there, as I said before, there are a lot of assertions in the code, so you see roughly what the code is doing. Um, and um, yeah, MediaTek has, uh, there, there's other firmware for other devices, but they seem to reuse the code a lot. So for the other devices, what I did is I looked up the relevant functions that they are using there with um, the other devices and I searched for the opcodes in my firmware that I wanted to to uh, change, so they, it made it a lot of easier. And of course, the firmware is no, not obfuscated at all, it's plain, plain ARM firmware. So the relevant function is the sim comment all. You can see, um, yeah, it's just a graph, it's used by, by nearly everything that is uh, using the, the, the mobile connection. And it's, um, yeah, it's uh, also very easy to, to disassemble. So, um, okay, short uh, demo video. Um, what happens? Uh, what happens? Um, so, what uh, what did I do? I wrote a little Perl script that will talk to a, a SIM card uh, somewhere I, I have access to, and. Um, it will listen on the TCP port uh, 4711, um, and it will, yeah, uh, I implemented a little protocol that uh, can transfer the SIM commands and uh, the responses. So, so what happens when we turn on the phone? So first we start application, then we turn on the phone, and um, now the phone connects via Wi-Fi on the right side, do you see that? And, um, we wait a little, and there you have the, the APDU commands that are forwarded over the Wi-Fi over TCP to my phone. I tried that also by sending them around the world, and um, that really uh, worked, even with a higher latency. So it was no problem, so the mobile network had no problem with a bit, bit of latency. So it's doing all kinds of stuff in between, like reading the phone book and also in, in between uh, mobile network authentication. So by that time, my, net, my phone was um, already registered to the network and I, um, even without the SIM, SIM card. So, yeah, for the defense, what, what can you do against that? Or can the, First, uh, what what does there are two cases? What uh, you can have unintended SIM usage, so like the attacker steals your SIM card, um, and of course this is a multiple usage of the same SIM card. Maybe the person is registered in the network, 
Maybe not, maybe you turn off the network connection. That's what you can do on Android. And um, yeah, for uh, like the bad guys, they can have, maybe they want to have a botnet so they can steal the SIM card from any phone there or from, mo from a phone in their botnet and they can like, uh, yeah, maybe they want to, to have a free call, a call somewhere. So also you can impersonate a person of interest as a bad guy. Like, um, uh, yeah, for the network provider, it's the same. It's as if the SIM card is in your phone. So defense, of course, you have to secure your basement. Actually, in the newer versions, somebody uh, thought about that. It's uh, not as easy anymore without privileges, without root on the phone to um, get to the SIM. But it's on my, some platforms not impossible. Um, of course, that's what the providers are also doing right now. Because of the, in the past, they had cloned SIM cards. They tried to detect multiple usages of the SIM card. Yeah, and you could maybe do a sanity check uh, of the physical location. So if, you're, if your phone registers in Hong Kong and five minutes later it's in Belgium or in Germany or in the US, uh, so something smells fishy. So, but everything has two sides, so maybe you want to do that. You want to use the SIM card on the remote. Then, um, yeah, it's even harder to defend. So, um, the only thing is you have a clue that the SIM card has high latency. So you could, um, it, the, the responses are the same because the SIM card, it's a really SIM card that is used just actively over the internet. So the providers could maybe try to limit the, the response time for the authentication requests, but this, I don't know, there's a zoo of uh, devices out there using the mobile networks. So um, maybe there are some very slow ones, maybe you have, or, um, packet loss and the radio connection, so I don't think that this is feasible to do to like um, prevent these attacks. So. so, as a conclusion, what did we achieve? We achieved, uh, we had a software SIM card, like a virtual SIM card in an Android phone. We have Android SIM access on the other side also in, a, um, in an Android phone, but I have to say, I think I've read on the, on the iPhone 3GS, I didn't try it, but it should also possibly be on some older iPhones. And we have a wormhole, so we have a network connection somewhere, or some communication channel outside of the phone. So this results in the transfer of network credentials. So. This is dual use. The bad guys, they uh, might uh, steal and access your SIM card and uh, use the botnet of, uh, to the, of different uh, Android phones. Maybe they open their own provider, to, like uh, selling uh, SIM cards or, or so on. But also it has also good, uh, yeah, good purpose to uh, like free the users from SIM cards and also free um, yeah, let them share the SIM cards. Um, you can uh, maybe build something like Tor for the mobile network. Yeah, like um, evading the, the monitoring by just rapidly switching the um, personas in the mobile network. Um, so um, the main problem is the mobile network security model is from the 80s and it's outdated. It's not uh, yeah, fit for the smartphones for applications, arbitrary applications running on your phone and for um, the different communication uh, channels that uh, your phone has. So basically also very important, the non-repudiation is gone for good. So if you have a SIM card in your phone and uh, I don't know, maybe you, the police suspects you of doing something bad, um, you could say, yeah, maybe somebody hacked my basement and uh, transferred the, the credentials to my phone. Yeah, that is a possibility. Yeah, so um, 
it's not uh, not like this strong evidence that you have a SIM card, which is a hardware device uh, that that is in your phone and that you can't change because it's not true. You can just transfer the the access. So. In fact, monitor, mobile networks are heavily monitored today, uh, but um, using that approach, the individuals can escape the monitoring by yeah, forwarding the, the, the authentication. Thank you.